Hey everybody, this is Gregory from DAP University. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can debug smart contracts whenever you're uh, developing decentralized applications on Ethereum. And I'm gonna walk you through how I've been using the debugger inside of Truffle uh, when building a real application. Um, so I th thought that I would you know, show you uh, how I've been using uh, the debugger, uh, developing a real app instead of setting up a tutorial example uh, kind of show you, you know, how I've been using it and how it's kind of got me out of some problems. So sometimes, you know, when you're developing uh, apps on Ethereum, uh, either when you're writing tests or when you're, you know, uh, interacting with a smart contract that you've developed on through the browser or something like that, you'll see a message like this, error, VM exception while processing transaction revert, and you don't know why. Um, you know, you, you see it, it's not a very helpful error message. Um, we know that a revert was triggered somewhere, um, but you don't really know which one. And it can be quite frustrating, if, especially if you have a lot of smart contracts that are inheriting from one another, if you're using libraries like Open Zeppelin uh, or something like that, and you don't know where the error is happening. Um, this can be a quite frustrating task. So I'm going to show you how to alleviate some of that headache and how to get to the bottom of things faster. But first, I want to show you this website that I came across recently. <laughs> this is VM exception while processing transaction uh, revert.com, um, which you know shows you the three common EVM errors: uh, revert, invalid opcode, or out of gas. And uh, it kind of goes through these scenarios. So I got this error. What do I do? Unfortunately, this error is incredibly generic and unhelpful. You have two options. One, panic. <laughs> two, don't panic. Uh, so yeah, you'll, you'll see these kinds of things. They're kind of cryptic. You don't know why. Um, so I would highly recommend just kind of browsing this website, A, for a good laugh, and B, uh, to kind of understand a little more uh, about how this works. So uh, let's go back to the, the, the terminal here. And so we're going to see like why I'm getting this error VM uh, exception while processing transaction revert. So like I said, I'm inside a real project here. Uh, it's actually a crowd sale project that I've been working on. And um, I, I've, I've triggered an error, so I'm not going to show you where, but I'll show you how I get to the bottom of it. So basically, uh, I'll run this test. I'll say truffle test. These are the tests that I've been writing against this smart contract. So if you want to, you know, simulate this yourself, essentially, you know, you'll need to understand the truffle framework. Uh, you'll need to have truffle version four, I believe, is the minimum in order to use the debugger. Um, you'll need some smart contracts. You'll need a test or you know a console or something like that in order to simulate this. Um, but yeah, I'll just show you how I encounter these problems when I'm developing something like a crowd sale and how I get to the bottom of them. So um, essentially, I'm going to run this test and I see this problem invalid, you know, you know uh, uh, sorry, this transaction revert. And I don't know why. And part of the reason is because uh, part of the reason is, sorry. Ah, I'm trying to find the contract file. Uh, part of the reason is I'm inheriting from so many different contracts here. Like, you know, this this is a this is a crowd sale. It's a timed crowd sale. It's a capped crowd sale. It's a minted crowd sale, and it's a whitelisted crowd sale. So I have all the other smart contracts that I'm inheriting from, and I don't know like where this error is necessarily coming from. I mean, I do for the sake of this tutorial, but like when I came across this error the first time, I didn't necessarily know why my test was failing. So, I mean, it could, it's, it's not in any of the code that I've written here because I can see that and I know it's not happening. And so it's somewhere inside of one of these parents. Um, so I'll show you how to get to the bottom of that. Essentially what I'll do is uh, I'll look at uh, my blockchain. So we can see uh, this runtime error, right, revert. And I can take this transaction receipt, or sorry, the transaction hash of uh, the transaction, right? Sorry, oops. This is a transaction that failed in the test. And I'll simply, uh, will run truffle debug. And I'll paste in the transaction hash. 
All right, so it's compiling the contracts. Uh, it's running. And essentially what this is going to do is going to pull up an environment that we can use to, uh, it's going to load up our contract, see? Uh, so it's it's basically uh, pulled up this crowd sale smart contract and it's uh, given us, you know, a prompt, right? And this is a debugging environment that's got a uh, reference to the contract and it's going to step through the state of this contract at this transaction. Um, so we can see here in the, in the um the terminal, uh, these are those things we're allowed to do. We can basically step over this current line. So this is just the contract declaration. We can step into it. We can step out of it and we can step, you know, just next. And we can, you know, use semicolon to see the step instructions, um, right? This is the lower level instructions. Um, we can toggle a breakpoint, continue until a breakpoint that we put in there. Um, so there's lots of stuff that you can do with this. And I'll be 100% honest, I'm not actually sure everything you can do with this. So if you have some tips and tricks that you'd like to share with uh, the audience, just leave a comment down in the comments below. I'm going to show you a pretty basic usage. We'll just uh, use this uh, step command uh, to step next. Let's click in. And... Um, Basically, what's happening is this last line of the test is trying to buy some tokens. And let's click next. I'm going to say, uh, here's the amount. Click next. It's pre value the purchase. All right. All right. Go next. So these are all the functions that like are dependent upon one another from the inherited contracts. And we'll see why this error is happening. Uh, basically, we'll do this until it stops. There may be a faster way to get through all this, but I'm just showing you for now. Like I said, I'm not 100% sure how to do everything uh, with this debugger, but I'll just show you some basic functionality. All right, so we've gotten to uh, a point where we can't step over or step to the next execution point anymore. So essentially, like what happened is um, we got to this thing that says while open. This is a modifier from timed crowd sale and this is where it stopped and this is the line that that triggered uh, uh, a revert so we can see that require that the block timestamp is greater than or equal to the opening time and the block timestamp is less than or equal to the closing time and this comes from timed crowd sale so let's open up timed crowd sale oops this is a different project let's uh Actually, open this up. Sorry. Let's pull this up here. Let's open up timed crowd sale. And we can see um, that, let's see, only while open. This is what we just saw. So block timestamp uh, has to be greater than or equal to the opening time and the block time is less than or equal to the closing time. So basically what happened um, is we're not within this time range, right? We're not inside of here. Uh, basically the time is, is, is invalid, so let's see why. So, I mean, I intentionally broke this test to show you how to use a debugger. Um, so basically what happened was I have to use uh, this utility to basically uh, increase the time, the current time, to the opening time, and then go past it. So essentially, if you look at the opening time, it's, uh, uh, yeah, you use this helper that basically calculates the latest time and adds uh, one week. So when our test ran, it was actually, uh, you know, we deployed our contract uh, to start opening the crowd sale a week from now, and when we ran the test, it failed because, you know, in our testing scenario, we hadn't reached that point in time yet. And I can use this helper to, to fast forward time inside this test uh, to increase the time to, you know, the opening time, which is a week from now, and then add uh, basically a second just to ensure that we're in a valid time range. So let's save this and run the test again. And let's shuffle test. 
it's kind of slow because it has to actually compile everything, pull in all these dependencies, and then run the test suite. Like I said, this can get really confusing because, uh, you know, you've got so many different, uh, so many different contracts that you're inheriting from. It can be really frustrating to try to find an error um, when it's especially not in code that you wrote yourself. So, all right, the tests are passing. So that gives you an idea of how to use the Truffle debugger. Um, again, there's certainly a lot more you can do with it, um, but that's kind of gets you started. That's kind of just a way to help you see, you know, what you can do with it. And you can read more about that on Truffle's website if you want to, but I wanted to just show you for now. Um, so yeah. Also, you know, that was a way to use in your process like, uh, uh, problems when you're experiencing reverts, uh, but there's all kinds of other errors you can um, run into, like out of gas errors or uh, things like that. So I hope you all liked that video. So be sure to uh, click the like button and also be sure to subscribe to the channel to see more videos about building decentralized applications on the Ethereum blockchain. And until next time, thanks for watching DAP University.